welcome to DC Today. Today is uh, November the 2nd, and uh, nice nice rally day on the market today. We were up uh, 564 points on the Dow, um, so pretty pretty broad-based um, across the board in markets. Um, it puts us up about 5% on the week so far, if we were to close here, but um, it's not Friday, so we still have tomorrow, and we'll see where that kind of Gets us, but if it did close here, it would be basically be the the big the best week of the year so far, going back about twelve months to November of last year. Um, so a nice little move to the upside. A lot of it has to do with some some perceived certainty. I guess there really isn't ever total certainty, but on interest rates, yesterday the Fed kind of left rates uh, unchanged. They've done that for the second time, second meeting that they've left them the same, and since then most of the yield curve has. Uh, moved lower, um, so meaning the bonds have rallied. The long end of the curve has rallied uh, much more. So the yield curve, technically, um, which was it's been inverted for for a long time, a year almost, um, has started uninvert a little bit, meaning that it was negative 100 plus basis points at one point, and as of yesterday morning, was down to about 16 to 18 basis points inverted, and so now we're kind of going the other way, which is that the short end of the curve is selling off in price and then rallying in yields. So long short term rates have gone up a little bit. When I say a little bit today, twos were up like two basis points. So not, not much of a move, but the long end has gone north of 515 on tens um, or 510 at least to now 467. So you've had rates kind of come down a long end and then on the, on the short end, they've stayed high. And so we've got more inversion. We're inverted now by about 30 basis points. So I put a note in there, but uh, for all of those saying that uh, the inverted yield curve uninverts right before a recession, um, I mean, history can, depending on what statistic you look at and what chart, I think you can paint a lot of different pictures. That's technically true, but it doesn't necessarily mean that that's true th this time. So, you know, the, we'll, we'll have to see, but um, it's a it's a kind of a common thing that people are talking about. Um, it it kind of makes sense to me, too, on why that's happening. You basically have an issuance report from Treasury yesterday that had it was actually a little bit lighter than expected, which is which was surprising to markets and, and appreciated. But you had more of a focus on the short end, which which is what they basically always do. But it was even more of a focus than than they usually do, meaning that they're going to issue more short term debt. So with more supply and the same demand, you would think that rates would go up a little bit on that. And then the other thing is that with the Fed. Um, letting their balance sheet roll off. They've ro let roll off about $800 billion so far um, uh, in the last 15 months. And what that means is just they're not reinvesting, you know, interest into into new bonds. As bonds mature, uh, they're not reinvesting the interest and then they're not reinvesting the proceeds from um, principal that they receive back into new bonds. So just by definition, the stuff that's maturing is on the short end as well. So the biggest buyer of the short end isn't there. And then you have a little more issuance. And I think that's what's causing this steep, uh, steepening, unsteepening of the yield curve, uh, uh, inverted, more of an inversion. Um, you have, um, you know, so Fed's, Fed's on hold. I mean, globally, we're seeing obviously a slowdown in China. We're seeing um, now a slight contraction technically in Europe by a one tenth of a percent. Um, we'll see if that lasts. But my point is just, most central banks around the world are on hold. And if you're asking me two things, one, which direction do I think interest rates will ultimately go in the near future? And also which central bank will sort of blink first? I mean, if everybody's on hold, the next direction is either up or down or the same. And if it's going to be one of those two things, I would um, uh, bet if I were a betting man that it would be lower. And if you had to bet which area it would be, um, it seems to me with a 4.9% GDP print in the U.S. and a slow uh, Europe, uh, flat to negative slightly, that um, the ECB would be would be the, the one to do it. All these central banks are looking at inflation. And so that's the deal. Um, and the question of whether unemployment needs to go from 3.8 upwards for inflation to go down, aka the Phillips curve, um, is to be seen. And uh, I, I'd say I'd say that it doesn't. And I think so long as you get definitive prints of normalized inflation, the central banks are going to be pretty quick to, to pull back on uh, where they have taken rates so far so fast. Um, 
So what's the trade and all that? You know, I mean, arguably most of the yield curve is in, in, in the bond market in that. But, you know, that's it's a tough call to get right. And so, you know, our positioning, you know, isn't it, you know, trying to time necessarily that that occurring, but it's more around what's more probable to happen. And that's the way I see it. Um, you know, right now we're we're sitting at um, a budget deficit of seven percent of GDP. Historically, that's that's why that's high. It's quite high. You know, we've had it in wartime in different periods of time that's been there before, but we we're not in wartime. There are some things going on in the world that we're supporting, so don't take that the wrong way. But we aren't in a world war at this point or anything like that, where a massive amount of expenditure needs to go into defense, and uh, and we're at seven percent of of GDP, and that's during a time of, of full employment. We're at three point eight percent unemployment. Um, so, you know, we're, we're sitting at a fiscal budget right now of about 24.2% of, uh, of GDP. That's high. One of the biggest components of what's increasing in this thing right now is interest expense. A lot of treasuries and, and debt in the country is short term. And so as it matures, it gets rolled over at much higher interest rates. And so interest expense is now about 14.8% of tax receipts. So almost 15% of tax receipts is just going to pay the interest. And that deficit that I mentioned of 7% of GDP, the biggest, or not, not the biggest, defense spending is going up as well. But as far as the rate of change, the fastest thing changing is interest expense. You also have potentially a looming government shutdown, and then you also have an election year coming up. And you also have inflation pulling back. And while GDP was 4.9% on the quarter or on third quarter, it's estimated now for fourth quarter, we're looking at more like a 1% print. So you have a slowing economy. Um, um, you have inflation that's moving lower. And, uh, and then you have these things like deficits and interest expense and, and, and elections and you know, some political turmoil. So it's just there's a lot of recipe to kind of vote for um, rates, you know, ultimately moving lower here sometime in 2024. Fed Futures is saying that as well. But we'll see how this all kind of plays out. The other thing I'll say is this is not necessarily predictive. And markets could definitely do, you know, opposite things that than what is intuitive. But if you think that the G, the U.S. economy may be sort of the cleaner, dirty shirt in the pile of laundry around the world between Europe, China, Japan, um, and and maybe our Fed has some more staying power with where they're going to keep interest rates, and maybe Europe, for example, lowers rates first. If you think about what that does to a relative value of currency say the dollar would, would appreciate. And I, and I think that that likely is going to be the case if that plays out and probably will stay that way until there's a crack in, in U.S. growth. Um, again, I'm talking relative versus something like the euro. So is parity on the, on the horizon? Uh, uh, time will tell. But uh, again, I would, take, I would take the over on that. Um, you know, that's a lot to chew through there. I, again, I, I, uh, I'm happy to see a great day in the market. Um, you know, this year, and frankly, the last two years have, have not been that friendly. So so we're, we're getting a little reprieve on the week. It's obviously a short period of time, but we will take it. With that, I'm going to let you go for the night. Uh, wish everyone a good night, and please reach out with your questions. I'll answer them as just as soon as I possibly can, as I always do. And um, I hope you have a good evening. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Mm -hmm.